president of the United States Zoological Association. All right. well, what's the danger of, of, of seeing this pass? Well, I, the, the danger is is they're they're fixing to take animals away from private owners um, and and facilities that currently know how to take care of their animals and turn them over to sanctuaries just because of a word sanctuary uh, and. Sanctuaries, keep in mind, that are not USB licensed, uh, close to the public, <clears throat> nonprofit, just just like it's, it's spelt out into Senate Bill 310, is you're going to hand animals over to someone that is not inspected by any government agency to control the Animal Welfare Act. Uh, you're going to hand them over to people that don't have emergency protocols, diet protocols, vet protocols, any of the training protocols and uh, you, you're asking for trouble. What is, now, your life has been threatened through all of this as My well. My life is threatened all the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just know my reporter was going live this morning. He kept bringing that up, that you didn't know who it was, but you have well, death we, threats. Well, we have ideas of, of the death threats. The death threats uh, came in uh, quite regularly to me and the, the people who invited me here to speak on the behalf of, of the animal world today. And the reason is, is because I have the original 25 year plan uh, out of their office and I have all of the receipts to show that most of the sanctuaries that are accredited by the organization that, that they have in this bill paid up to $94,000 to start those sanctuaries. You know, they bought the animals to put in those sanctuaries. And by the year 2025, they have a plan to make these animals completely out of, out of the private sector into only their sanctuaries to profit $1.5 million per year. How'd you obtain that? Can't say. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got I, as a, a person who owns and runs the largest facility in the world, uh, who I house 170 tigers right now, uh, I, I have my own belief that, that the tragedy in Zanesville was not absolutely a tragedy. Uh, I believe that there was a, a lot of bit of setup behind that. Uh, one man who owns the keys to the cages in his facility uh, would never have been able to, um, why, why, why cut them apart first of all when you own the key to the padlock? Uh, second of all, one person would never have been able to release 56 dangerous man-killing animals uh, by himself uh, without being killed or injured to start with. Uh, let alone take the time to cut three foot holes in the cages. Uh, so I believe that, that the state of Ohio uh, is very misrepresented and, and it's a shame that a bigger investigation was not put behind what happened in Zanesville, Ohio, uh, because I would never have been able to pull something like that off myself and get out of my facility uh, without one of the cats taking me out before I had time to unzip my pants and pull my pants down and shoot myself. Jack Hanna had a three-year-old boy's arm completely ripped off at his facility. Uh, so in my eyes, he, Jack Hanna is no one to be talking about whether or not somebody should be responsible with, with a lion or a tiger or a monkey. Um, I think uh, responsible private ownership is, is the way to go. What about having the owners <laughs> or the people in charge of some of the organizations um, psychologically tested too. Well, you know, you can, you can get me going all day on this uh, because, in my opinion, there's a whole lot worse parents out there than there is exotic animal owners. <laughs> Just because uh, she's a fruitcake and she has monkeys doesn't mean I'm a fruitcake and I shouldn't have tigers. We have a government agency called the United States Department of Agriculture who governs the Federal Animal Welfare Act that needs to be doing their job. <laughs> and, and, and sanctuaries and zoos and facilities should be made to be USDA licensed. We have a federal law right now that just needs to do their job. So, and just to be clear, you're saying, it's not that you're saying that change doesn't need to be made, but you're saying that SB 310 isn't 
the way I'm, it goes. I'm saying change does need to happen. Uh, it needs to happen properly and fairly. Uh, there's there's two things. One is SB 310 is a dead bill. It, it, it is. I've seen it. I've been to facilities. People are going to die over this bill. Uh, whether it's uh, at a gun standoff like the the man in Georgia last week that shot himself over his chickens, uh, people are not going to give up. They're animals. Good morning. My name is Joe Schrago, and I'm here as the president of the United States Zoological Association. I operate the largest accredited big cat facility open to the public in the entire world. The AZA, the GAFS, TAOS, ZAA, as well as our own organization, the USDA, is nothing more than a private club. As the president of the USDA, I can truthfully tell you, no private organization has the funding or the manpower to send inspectors around on any kind of regular basis to inspect sanctuaries and zoos. The United States Department of Agriculture, the USDA, the only government agency that enforces the Animal Welfare Act, this is their job. Make them do it. I would suggest and plead to the lawmakers of, this, of Ohio to adopt what the state of Florida has done, and that is make every zoo and sanctuary be licensed, be open to the public, so the eyes of the public will be on those who claim they care for animals. Instead of hiding behind closed doors with no inspection on a regular basis. That was me. It is time that the animal rights folks got out of the business to care for animals they know nothing about and go home before they get more people killed. Senate Bill 310 is going to get just that, more people killed. The state of Ohio is going to hand over some of the most dangerous animals to horse people. The Global Federation of Animal Sanctuaries has 40 accredited facilities, 28 horse, 9 primate, and 3 large cat, totaling 21 cats in all 3 facilities combined. And over 129 cats have been killed or dead from lack of proper care. Multiple injuries, including 451 stitches to save a woman's arm, escapes causing cats to run around town in just one of their accredited facilities. Listen to the experts that do this for a living. Not one of the animal rights people or a TV personality who himself has had a young man's boy ripped completely out by a full-grown lion. Sanctuary is not your answer to this. Make the law that plainly states if you're a zoo or a sanctuary, you must be licensed by the USDA as an exhibitor to make them abide by federal laws of emergency protocols, diet plans, vet plans, and training. There are bad parents and good parents. Should you ban all children because one walks into a school and shoots another child? I have seen far more bad sanctuaries than I have private owners. I will agree 100% that we need regulation but not bans. There is a proper way to regulate animals, yeah. but taking the animal away from people, do not take care of them. Have done the research on them, has the training for them, and the animals know that. It is not what you want to do and hand them over to people who wish they could run a sanctuary. In my 30 years in this industry, I have learned one thing, and that is every sanctuary started as a private owner who found a way to get the public to fund their hobby by getting a nonprofit status, getting free animals for their hobby, with this including Tippy Hedren, Carol Baskin, and every other sanctuary in the United States. This is simply a multi-million dollar business using the word sanctuary as a scam for a private hobby. Look at the spreadsheets I have provided and see the proof. This scam is created by putting Ohio in a panic with the Zanesville tragedy. Was he crazy or was he killed? The only people going to make millions on Senate Bill 310 are the ones pushing for it. I have the receipts of the main facility pushing this bill and they paid $94,000 for the cats they claim they've rescued. Please do not allow the lawmakers to be used as pawns for a multi-million dollar chess game. And please do not do this to the animals because of human ignorance. Are there enough sanctuaries, zoos, and other types of space to take in the animals that are confiscated under the Well, as, as a, a, a person that goes around and, and 
inspects facilities to be accredited because we accredit facilities too. And keep in mind, the word accredited holds no water with the government. It holds no water with any other organization in the world. It just means that you have paid your price, you have kissed enough butt, you have rubbed enough elbows to get into a country club of whatever organization it is. Okay? I can name you three facilities here in Ohio that need close down before someone else dies. And these would be sanctuaries? This would be sanctuaries. Could the, could, could the network of sanctuaries in Ohio now absorb the animals that would be no. confiscated? You, you do not have enough sanctuaries in Ohio to absorb just Ohio sanctuaries. You do not have enough sanctuaries in Ohio to absorb the sanctuaries that need to be closed down. There is not enough sanctuaries throughout this country to keep taking in animals that states want to ban on panic. The animals that are in the private sector in Ohio are not going to kill the general public. You do not have chimpanzees as pets in somebody's yard right now. You have very few tigers that are pets. Okay, you have more tigers in Ohio enclosed to the public sanctuaries that are in a dangerous risk right now than you ever find a private owner. If you are a sanctuary, you're going to be open to the public so every person that comes through there with a camera can complain about the way you're taking care of those animals. And you will see a whole lot better than sanctuary. Are you saying you don't believe he committed I'm, suicide? I'm saying I believe that it was a setup to further this agenda. Yeah. There's no way that man could have ever let all those animals out of there by cutting his cages apart with bolt cutters and got out of there alive. And that's coming from a man with 170 tigers. So somebody killed him so the state I, could move forward with this I, kind of I, law? I believe, Is that? I believe Terry Thompson was murdered to further this agenda. Yes. And if you look at the handouts I gave you, it has this specific agenda that you all are falling into was put into action in 2006. And that agenda comes straight out of the office of the largest financial backer right now that's profiting $1.5 million from this whole little conspiracy. Some of our people within our organization was there in January of 2011 trying to remove animals and it was stopped Stop by, by the law enforcement and the fish and wildlife of this state. So I think we're looking at a much larger conspiracy than we think we are. Could, yeah. Could you explain your standing at, to go in and take animals there? Were you called in in some respect? We were we were asked to come in by neighbors and at, at the night that we had people there, the police were called, people were arrested for being drunk underage, and we were there to offer law enforcement help because the law enforcement had fully capable charges of being able to confiscate those animals that night. But they didn't do that. So they, they refused to because they said they were not a public threat. They were well cared for. So we left. And the, the statements of, you know, the press statements, the statements in writing that Terry Thompson was a thorn in their blood, you know, for so many years. In fact, they had a perfect out in January of 2011. I'm sorry. Did you say you were there in 2011? Brought in the secret weapon. <laughs> Fine. But they moved us to such a small room, I couldn't bring them up. Okay, well, what, what's your name? Deborah Ann Millett. Monty is my uh, service animal. He's a savannah. He's a second generation. What's a savannah? Savannah is a cross between an African serval and a domestic, and in his case, it was an Egyptian mound. He's 22 pounds of twisted steel. Is this the first one you've had? I got others? another one, and I'm getting a third one, and I have servals and curables too. These aren't required to be in any kind of special cages or anything, right? No, not need the servals or curacles either. <laughs> what a position, Lotsie. Look at that. <laughs>
Has he been to the State House before? No, this is his first time. We've kind of, I, after being thrown out of three states, you kind of avoid these things. What, uh, what did you tell the lawmakers today? I asked, basically, I would like to see them scrap the bill. The big deal about this, I mean, people are saying, you know, shouldn't be tigers in somebody's backyards. There shouldn't be gorillas in somebody's backyards. I think it's up to every individual. Tigers are not taught to kill you. They're bottle fed hand raised babies and they respect their caregivers. They know who feeds them. They're not going to bite the hand that feeds them. I'm BJ McDowell. Can you spell your name for me? BJ. I have one Savannah and I do have a couple other hybrids. I have Bengals and I have Serengeti and that's why I'm against it. The Bengals, the number one registered breed in the world. But they're would, hybrids. Would you have a problem with the bill or would you be fighting the bill if. if these cats were exempt from it. Would no, you still be down I'd still here? fight it because you're taking away our constitutional rights to own our property.